in this video, I'm going to remind you about inverse matrices. Now, there are really two types of, in of inverses we can talk about, so I'm going to draw a line down my paper so we can talk about them separately. First, we have what we refer to as additive inverses, and then we'll compare them to multiplicative inverses. All right, just in general terms, what you need to understand is when you take a number, like the number 5, if I were to add its inverse to it, what it does is basically undoes the operation or reverses the operation. Result is 0. We call 0 the additive identity. Additive identity. And 5 and negative 5 are additive inverses of each other. But if we look um, with respect to multiplication, if I were to take a number like 5 and multiply it by its inverse, the reciprocal of 5, what I'm going to get is the number 1. And the number 1 is referred to as the multiplicative identity. Multiplicative. Multiplicative identity, so phonetic, identity. Okay, now that's with respect to integers. Now if I were looking at matrices, specifically I'm going to play with matrix A, I want to talk about what an additive identity looks like and a multiplicative identity looks like with respect to matrices. If additive inverses are supposed to zero out each other, then all we're going to do is take matrix A change all of the elements of matrix A to their opposites. So the opposite of negative 2 would be a positive 2. Opposite of 2 is a negative 2. Opposite of negative 5, sorry, of 5 is a negative 5. And opposite of negative 4 is a positive 4. So if I add all the elements, row by row, uh, column by column, to each other, I'm going to end up with a 0 matrix. All the elements of this matrix are going to be 0 because negative 2 plus 2 is 0, 2 plus negative 2 is 0, and so forth. Now multiplicative inverses are a little bit different. Not much different, I guess more difficult, let's put it that way. When I multiply a matrix like the one I have above, matrix A, negative 2, 2, 5, negative 4, when I multiply it by its inverse, the result is going to be the identity matrix. Remember, that's the one where we have ones going along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Okay, so the tricky part, first of all, going back, additive inverse is no big deal to find the additive inverse. So this, this matrix right here is the additive inverse of matrix A. But now to find the multiplicative inverse of matrix A, that takes a little bit of work. So I'm going to write this down now. Multiplicative inverse of matrix A. It doesn't take a lot of work, just a little bit of work. This is where we need to make use of the determinant. So hopefully you remember what the determinant is. So how we find the multiplicative inverse is like this. Step one is to find the determinant. Find the determinant of A. How do you do that? You remember you multiply the A times D terms together and subtract the B and C. So I'm going to write negative 2 times negative 4 minus 5 times 2. Negative 2 times negative 4 is 8. I'll write it down. 8 minus 10 is a negative 2. So the determinant of my matrix, my original matrix A, is negative 2. What I do with the determinant is this. I write, let's say, the inverse of A, and by the way, this is a good time to do this. The inverse of A is often written A to the negative first power, is found by taking 1 over the determinant and multiplying it by, not by matrix A, but by that modified version of matrix A. Remember where we switch places with A and D and then we negify or change or negate B and C. I just realized you couldn't see what I was writing here, so let me go back. 
you find the determinant of a by multiplying negative 2 times negative 4 and subtracting 5 times 2. That's where we got the negative 2. And now it's saying that when you find the inverse of a, you write 1 over negative 2, 1 over the determinant. And right here, I'm not going to write the exact same matrix. I'm going to write a and d switched and b and c negated, negative 2, negative 5. And all you do is you multiply this fraction times each element, and the result is the inverse. So negative 1 half times 4, negative times negative is positive, half of 4 is 2. Negative 1 half times negative 2, negative times negative is positive, half of 2 is 1. Negative 1 half times 5, that's saying half of 5. Negative times negative is positive. I can either write 5 halves, which I'm partial to, or you can write 2 and a half. It doesn't matter. And then lastly, negative 1 half times 2. Negative times negative positive. Half of 2 is 1. So what I'm stating is this um, matrix right here, this one right here, is the inverse of A. Or I can say A to the negative first power. Now, what you want to try to do is check your work. How would you know if you really did it right? Well, you would take this matrix, put it right here, and see if you get the identity matrix. So if I put 2, 1, 5 halves, 1 in this spot, would I get the um, identity matrix? I'm going to go ahead and insert those values and see if we can get it to work out. Watch. I'm going to put 2, 1, 5 halves, 1. And then I'm going to practice my matrix multiplication so I can show you what I'm talking about. If I multiply negative 2 times 2, that's a negative 4, and I add to it a 2 times a 5 halves, hopefully now you might see why I left it as a fraction, 2 over 1 times 5 over 2 is 5. What's a negative 4 plus a 5? There's my 1. I'm going to keep going. To get the first row, uh, second column, I'm going to multiply negative 2 times positive 1. That's a negative 2. And then I'm going to add it to 2 times 1, which is 2. What's a negative 2 plus 2? That's a 0. And then I would continue. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 plus negative 4 times 5 halves. I'm going to put a 1 under there, cancel my... 4 and my 2, so that's a negative 10. What's positive 10 plus negative 10? 0. And then lastly, 5 times 1 is 5. Uh, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. What's a 5 and a negative 4? That's a positive 1. So you see that this matrix multiplied by the original A matrix gives us the, the multiplicative identity or the identity matrix.